Jermal Charlo is a former world champion who's in the process of placing himself in strong position to again be crowned a champion. At age 27, Charlo's unbeaten with the type of star quality both inside and outside the ring that speaks well for the future of boxing. In fact, Charlo has already made history. In May 2016, Jermel Charlo won a championship at Super Welterweight, making Jermel and Jermel the first twins to hold world titles in the same division. When Jermel was crowned, Jermel was already a reigning title holder at 154 pounds. Jermel has since vacated that title to campaign in the talent-packed middleweight division. A win over Hugo Centeno will likely secure Houston's Charlo the opportunity to soon challenge one of the middleweight leaders, Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez. Initially, at least, Jermel wasn't as widely recognized as Jermel, primarily because he turned pro without the aid of a power promoter. In 2013 and 14, however, national television exposure on Showbox and Show Extreme introduced an athletic and powerful prospect. Charlo's potential was unmistakable. In April 2014, he dominated the veteran Hector Munoz at the StubHub Center in Carson, California. Touch him up, back to your corner. In the first round, Charlo, who stands a rangy six foot, kept his distance and displayed virtually every punch that can be thrown. Charlo continue to pound the head. Hector Munoz, there's an uppercut, follows it up with a jab. In the second, Munoz attempted to get close. Another left uppercut by Charlo, follows it up with a combination. And paid a predictable and painful price. Another combination by Charlo, finishes up with a left hook. Charlo really putting on the pressure here. As round four comes to a close. Munoz wanted to continue after absorbing four rounds of punishment, but a ringside doctor nixed that idea. The win made Charlo 18 and up. Boxing, Lines only, baby, lines only. Charlo's debut on Showtime Championship Boxing came in December 2014 at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. His opponent, Lenny Botai, was 22 and two and had never been off his feet. But the Italian also never had to stand up to anyone with Charlo's skill set and power. In the third round, Charlo showed both creativity and clout. Leading with a right hand, he followed with a hook that landed flush. Boom. Oh, down goes Bowtie! While Bowtie managed to barely beat the count, his corner dreaded seeing him hit like that again and tossed in a towel of surrender. And Charlo scores the third round. TKO victory. The towel was also thrown in. The Charlo twins possessed similar skills and body types, but they were beginning to separate themselves, with Jamal gaining the reputation as the brother with the more aggressive style and the bigger punch. No problems for Houston's Jamal Charlo tonight. Charlo's win over Bowtie made him the mandatory challenger for the veteran IBF champion Cornelius K-9 Bundridge. That fight came in September 2015 at Foxwoods in Connecticut. Touch him up. Bundridge was physically strong, effectively awkward, and far more experienced than Charlo. But he was also 42 years old and matching him with a young, hungry tiger like Charlo almost seemed unfair. There's winning a world title, and there's winning a world title in style. Charlo backed up the overwhelmed Bundridge from the start. He downed him in the first round with a counter right. And Charlo came right over the top of a slow Bundridge jab. Dropped him halfway through the second with a jab. That was with the left jab, Marvin. It's rare I've ever seen that in boxing. Now that's Four. power. And floored him twice more in the third. He's hurt again. Charlo's got him in a lot of trouble here. The final time with a thudding right hand. Jamal Charlo was 25 years old, 23 and 0, and a world titleist at Super Welterweight. Charlo's growing reputation as a pulverizing puncher was amplified in his first defense, which came against Haitian veteran Wilkie Campford in Dallas. For the second fight in a row, Charlo did something many fighters never do. He scored a knockdown with a jab. He also sent Camford to the canvas with a right uppercut in the third round and finished him with a knockdown in the fourth. Beautiful left uppercut by Charlo a second ago to hurt Camford. Hit him in the right eye. K9 
Camford picked himself up, but told the referee he was having trouble seeing out of his right eye. End of fight. Against Bundridge and Camford, Charlo scored knockdowns in six of the seven combined rounds. If he was going to be that destructive, it was inarguably time for a rise in the level of competition. As it turned out, that came in both of his next two fights. In May 2016, Charlo defended against Austin Trout in Las Vegas. This was a different type of opponent. Trout was a slick southpaw and a former titleist who was good enough to have convincingly beaten future Hall of Famer Miguel Cotto. And Charlo has Trout in trouble in the corner, working the body with the uppercut, but Trout, the veteran, fights out and turns the tables on Charlo as they exchange shots. It was a close fight. Trout's considerable boxing skills troubled Charlo, and the challenges will never waver. That was a stiff straight left. This a great tactical fight between two highly skilled dreamanoids. The difference, as it turned out, was Charlo's superior punch and solid chin. Oh, and another right hand! Good tactical fight, you know, if one guy makes a mistake, the other guy's ready for the sharp counter. Oh, good counter right over the top by Charlo. And definitely a star on the rise. After 12 rounds of decision, close but unanimous went Charlo's way. He was now shining in an even brighter light. Charlo was having super success at super welterweight. Still, it was no secret that he was struggling more and more to make 154 pounds, and a move to middleweight was imminent. There was only one question. Would he make one final defense? The challenger in question, IBF number one contender Julian Williams, had been calling out Charlo for months. To Charlo's credit, he delayed his jump up in weight and accepted a showdown with Williams. In December 2016, they clashed in Los Angeles in one of the most eagerly anticipated fights of the year. It was the first super welterweight title fight between unbeatens since Floyd Mayweather, Canelo Alvarez. This is prize fighting at its best. Well, counter to counters, and these are the kind of things we're gonna see tonight, a lot of highly skilled stuff. A minute into the second, Charlo struck with a familiar weapon, his jab. Oh, and that jab sent Williams to the canvas. Williams rebounded quickly, and for the remainder of round two and portions of the third and fourth, he struck cleanly with jabs and power shots. The fighters were willing to test each other, and the skill level was as high as it gets. In the fifth, it ended in a flash with a single shot that can't be forgotten. Another one, two, but a counter right! Face first goes Williams! What a counter! Charlo's counter right uppercut was as beautiful a punch as a fighter can throw. That he got up was impressive, but Charlo finished him with a 12-punch flurry producing his third knockdown in less than five rounds. Down goes Williams for the third time. The fight is over. Houston, you definitely do not have a problem when it comes to Jamal, the hitman Charlo. What a statement made in this fight. Charlo left the highest level of the super welterweight division much as he had entered it, with a loud bang. With an emotional win that defined his career to date, Charlo said goodbye to the 154-pound class while putting the world's best middleweights on notice. In July 2017, Charlo made his official middleweight debut in a title eliminator against Argentina's Jorge Haaland in Brooklyn. It was a blowout. The Southpaw Haaland's mobility was extremely limited by an injury to his left knee and facing a fighter like Charlo with such a handicap is tantamount to losing, even before you try to win. There was a right uppercut knockdown in round two. Haaland down! And a left hook knockdown in round four that brought a merciful end. Oh, and Haaland goes down! Off balance! The difference? Charlo was now a middleweight, not a super welterweight. No difference at all? He was still knocking people out. And for a fighter who idolized Thomas Hearns, retaining his power as he moved up in weight certainly fit the narrative. In preparing for his next opponent, Charlo has a lot to consider. Hugo Centeno is exceptionally tall and has shown one-punch KO power. Then again, Centeno has a lot to consider as well because Charlo continues to display versatility, speed, and big-time pop. It's an excellent matchup for middleweights who are anxious to take the next step 
which is a step away from fighting for a world title.